Hi, welcome to Terence Sobestan e-learning video. Welcome to Terence Sobestan e-lecture. Chapter 7, New Product Development and Product Life Cycle Strategies. Good afternoon students, today lecture, will focus on new product development and product life cycle strategies. New Product Development, NPD, is the complete process of bringing a new product, product improvements, product modifications, or new brands to market. Major sources of new product ideas, include internal sources, and external sources, such as customers, competitors, distributors and suppliers, and others. A company typically generates, hundreds even thousands of ideas, to find a few good ones. Generally, there are eight major steps in NPD. Idea generation, idea screening, concept development, marketing strategy development, business analysis, product development test marketing, and commercialization. These steps may be iterated as needed. Some steps may be eliminated. To reduce the time that the NPD process takes, many companies are completing several steps, at the same time, referred to as concurrent engineering, or time to market. Most industry leaders, see new product development, as a proactive process, where resources are allocated, to identify market changes, and seize upon new product opportunities, before they occur. Many industry leaders, see new product development as an ongoing process, referred to as continuous development, in which the entire organization, is always looking for opportunities. New product development, is very expensive and very risky. By one estimate, 67% of all new products introduced, by established companies fail. Why do so many new products fail? There are several reasons. Although an idea may be good, the company may overestimate market size. The actual product may be poorly designed, or it might be incorrectly positioned, launched at the wrong time, priced too high, or poorly advertised. A high-level executive might push a favorite idea, despite poor marketing research findings. Sometimes the costs of product development, are higher than expected, and sometimes, competitors fight back harder, than expected. Therefore, companies must take a holistic approach, to new product development. For instance, Customer-centered new product development, that focuses on finding new ways, to solve customer problems, and create more customer-satisfying experiences. Or, team-based new product development, in which various company departments, work closely together, overlapping the steps in the product development process, to save time and increase effectiveness. Or, systematic new product development, a company can install an innovation management systems, to collect, review evaluate, and manage new product ideas. Students, please read the 8 major steps in new product development by yourselves. Next, so would like to discuss product life cycle. The PLC. PLC, is a business analysis that attempts to identify, a set of common stages in the life of commercial products. The goals of PLC are to reduce time to market, improve product quality, reduce prototyping costs, identify potential sales opportunities and revenue contributions, and reduce environmental impacts at end of life. The product life cycle has four very clearly defined stages, each with its own characteristics, that mean different things for business, that are trying to manage the life cycle of their particular products. Introduction Stage This stage of the cycle, could be the most expensive, for a company launching a new product. The size of the market, for the product is small, which means sales are low, although they will be increasing. On the other hand, the cost of things, like research and development, consumer testing, and the marketing needed to launch the product, can be very high, especially if it's a competitive sector. The introduction stage, is probably the most important stage in the PLC. In fact, most products that fail do so. This is the stage in which, the product is initially promoted. Public awareness, is very important to the success of a product. If people don't know about the product, they won't go out and buy it. There are two different strategies, you can use to introduce your product to consumers. You can use either a skimming strategy, or a penetration strategy. If a skimming strategy is used, then prices are set very high initially, and then gradually lowered over time. This is a good strategy to use, if there are few competitors for your product. Profits are high with this strategy, but there is also a great deal of risk. If people don't want to pay high prices, you may lose out. The second pricing strategy is a penetration strategy. 
In this case you set your prices very low, at the beginning and then gradually increase them. This is a good strategy to use, if there are a lot of competitors who control a large portion of the market. Profits are not a concern under this strategy. The most important thing, is to get you product known, and worry about making money at a later time. Next, growth stage. This stage is typically characterized by, a strong growth in sales and profits, and because the company, can start to benefit from economies of scale in production, the profit margins, as well as the overall amount of profit, will increase. This makes it possible for businesses, to invest more money, in the promotional activity to maximize the potential of this growth stage. If you are lucky enough to get your product out of the introduction stage, you then enter this stage. The growth stage is where your product starts to grow. In this stage, a very large amount of money is spent, on advertising. You want to concentrate of telling the consumer, how much better your product is, than your competitors products. There are several ways to advertise your product. You can use TV, and radio commercials, magazine, and newspaper advertisements, or you could get lucky, and customers who have bought your product, will give positive word of mouth to their friends and family. If you are successful with your advertising strategy, then you will see an increase in sales. Subsequently, maturity stage. During this stage, the product is established, and the aim for the manufacturer is now to maintain, the market share they have built up. This is probably the most competitive time, for most products and businesses need to invest wisely, in any marketing they undertake. They also need to consider, any product modifications or improvements, to the production process which might give them a competitive advantage. The key to surviving this stage, is differentiating your product from the similar products offered, by your competitors. Due to the fact that sales are beginning to stabilize, you must make your product stand out among the rest. Finally, decline stage. Eventually, the market for a product will start to shrink, and this is what's known as the decline stage. This shrinkage could be due to the market becoming saturated, for instance, all the customers who will buy the product, have already purchased it, or because the consumers are switching to a different type of product. While this decline may be inevitable, it may still be possible for companies to make some profit, by switching to less expensive production methods, and cheaper markets. This is the stage in which sales of your product begin to fall. Either everyone that wants to has bought your product, or new, more innovative products, have been created that replace yours. Many companies decide to withdraw their products, from the market due to the downturn. The only way to increase sales during this period, is to cut your costs, and reduce your spending. Students. There are some limitations of PLC. Firstly, it is difficult for marketing management, to gauge accurately where a product is on its life cycle. A rise in sales per se is not necessarily evidence of growth, a fall in sales per se does not typify decline, and some products, for instance Coca-Cola and Pepsi, may not experience a decline. Secondly, differing products possess different PLC shapes. A fad product develops as a steep sloped growth stage, a short maturity stage, and a steep sloped decline stage. Products such as Coca-Cola and Pepsi, experience growth, but also a constant level of sales, over a number of decades. Thirdly, for specific products, the duration of each PLC stage, is unpredictable, and it's difficult to detect when maturity, or decline has begun. Therefore, very few products follow the same cycle. Many products, don't even make it through all four stages. Some stages even bypass stages. For example, one product may go straight, from the introduction stage, to the maturity stage. As conclusion, every product requires a great deal of research, and close supervision throughout its life. Without proper research and supervision, your product will probably never get out of the first stage. Please do more self-study and research. To differentiate yourself with other students. Remember to attend both lecture and tutorial class. Hand on exercises or ad hoc tasks will be given. If you never come, sir will know. Somebody. Is going to get. Hurt. Real. Bad.